looking at getting into CNC woodworking, or maybe you're looking at upgrading from a smaller machine, stick around and I'll unbox and assemble this Genmitsu Prover XL 4030 V2 desktop CNC machine. Hey, Nick from Old Fashioned Nights, and after having my Genmitsu 3020 CNC machine for a few years, I decided that it's time to upgrade to something a little bit bigger. So I just got my Prover XL 4030 V2 delivered. The box doesn't look the greatest, but we're gonna go ahead, open it up, do an unboxing, and see how it works. Okay, so we're gonna do our unboxing. Again, the box looks like it's seen better days. So let's open it up and see how it looks. We have a baggie of instructions. Got a nice thick foam padding. Okay, we got all our parts in the box here. Looks like we got a spindle holder with a USB flash drive, USB cable. We have our Z probe. We got some wrenches and some Allen keys. We have these little spin nuts. And this looks like hardware to hold your material to the base. We have some cables. We have a nut driver, seven millimeters. We have a sorted hardware. like a collet of some sort. We got some end mill bits. Looks like a power cable. Looks like we can take out the gantry. This foam cutout. Here it looks like the control board. Genmitsu, take out the spindle, nice and sturdy feels like. Now I think we can take out this big chunk of packing foam. Looks like some brackets here, some more brackets, X motor, it's a lot bigger than my 3020, I'll say that. Let's get rid of some of this foam. Lots of foam. Now even though I said the box looked pretty rough, everything seems to be well placed inside the box with foam. No visible damage on anything. Uh, so it seemed like any sort of force taken to the box was absorbed by the foam, which is great. So let's finish getting the rest of this stuff out. Oh, that's heavy. My thought says to cut the box and pull this out, but just in case something's wrong, I need to send it back. I want to save the box. So let's figure out how to do this safely without hurting the machine or my back. Ow. My finger's stuck. How do I do that? Ooh. And it looks like we got all our cables that come with it. So let's get those out. A nice set of cables. Here's the big base with the Y1 and Y2 motors. Nice and sturdy. Okay, let's start assembling it. 
Okay, so time to put this bad boy together. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the instruction booklets and we'll start from there like all smart people do. Okay, so we gotta make sure that these rollers are the exact same distance. That is not lined. Adjust the ball screw with the nut driver to ensure they're equal. So it looks like I gotta adjust that screw here. Okay, that's touching that. And that's touching that. So we are aligned between Y1 and Y2. Step one, step two, we're going to need the X axis module to do a good job of placing your hardware in a nice little container like so, calling out what it is. So those bags you have to cut up and dig through. So this is really nice. So now we need to place it on here and get those flat cap screws installed. I think we're just gonna line it up. Okay, let me start tightening screws all the way. Okay, on to the next step. Now we're going to install the XZ axis module. So we'll need our spindle. So we got our washers. Looks like I'm gonna place it into these holes here to hold the spindle. And it's got some openings on the back that I should be able to get my tool through to tighten it. So that's nice. Makes assembly a little easier. So let's get these ready. Get that one started just to get it secured. Again, it's nice it's got that opening in the back here to allow your tool to get through. So I got that one a little started. Go ahead and place this one. Okay, spindle's nice and tight. Step four, I'm gonna need the coupler. And then I need the X-axis motor. So insert the X-axis coupler onto the lead screw and then insert the X-axis motor into the coupling. Tighten the four socket head cap screws, then tighten the two coupler grub screws to secure the lead screw and motor shaft. So let's see, I think it goes right over here. So I'm gonna first need to put the coupler onto the motor. Only downside about placing the screws on the bed here is they fall on the tracks. But that's all right. Always have your coffee handy and nearby. I'm ready to do some delicate work with all that caffeine. All right, on to step five installing Y axis drag chain brackets. So that's those brackets here. So we need bracket A. I'm pretty sure that's bracket A. And bracket B. So I need Y axis and Y axis. Okay, so those two, this one's probably the X axis. Place that on the side for now. Right, that one tightened. Get that tightened in there. All right, we're done with that step. Now we're gonna have to install the Y-axis drag chain. Yeah, how is it? Is that supposed to go like this? Maybe. Yeah. I'm gonna go with that.
Okay, that is done. Again, took longer than probably what it should. Stuff was left up to interpretation. But on to step seven. Installing the x-axis drag chain bracket. So we're gonna need, we're going to need the x-axis drag chain bracket A and the x-axis drag chain B. So it looks like we've got our A and our B. Installed. Now the other one goes on the back here, like so. Tighten that down. That step is done. Now we're going to install the x-axis drag chain. We're going to need the x-axis drag chain, which is on the floor hanging. Let's go. This one goes on the top. I guess this one goes like that. Okay, so we're done with that. Okay, so I went ahead and got everything wired, which is really nice, is that everything's clearly labeled. Uh, your labels on your wire match up exactly with what you're putting it to. Uh, even the back of the controller clearly calls out where those connectors go to. So that was real easy. So I did the connectors before I lubed up the drive gears. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I have my dry lube, I'm gonna place it on all the lead screws get it looped up, and then we'll get it turned on and see how she works. That comes out. Okay, so I'm going to turn it on and I'm going to move the axes around, get that lubricant spread, get some areas here that I missed on the Y axis. So let's plug her in and get it going. Work it back. Thing moves nice and fast. So I'm gonna go ahead, put back the guards for the Y axis lead screws, and then we'll do a test cut. Okay, we have everything set up. We have a file loaded. We have some wood on the CNC machine. Now let's see how she works. Okay, we did our test cut with the test file. Came out looking great. There's a few areas where the letters kind of 
you know, cut out, but that's because I didn't scale the cut to the bit I was using. So it got close. I figured that was going to happen. This was more just to see how fast it would cut that file. And compared to my 3020, this thing was like cutting a hot knife through butter. It was so fast. Very impressed. I'm looking forward to doing some projects with it. Uh, and we'll see where it goes. So again, if you enjoyed this content, please hit like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks. Bye.